Texas, Alabama. We're going to bring you some good old Southern football from these two. Starting in 1969, Archie Manning of House Manning, first of his name. Manning, 436 yards, ran for another 104. You didn't know Arch could run? There's proof. Wow. Five total touchdowns late in the fourth quarter. Smoking minute. on the sideline. Bear Bryant <laughs> just smoking a dirt. <laughs> Scott Hunter finds George Raniger, 14-yard touchdown. Bama escapes 33-32. All right. Speaking of House Manning, 2001, son of Archie, Eli Manning in Ole Miss, host in Alabama. Rebels trailing 24-20, under two minutes to play. Watch Eli, Joe Gunn, game-winning touchdown, minute to play. Eli, 325 yards in that one. Old Miss winners, 27 20 Wait, that's Monday Night Football's Eli Manning. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, the old Katy Perry. Oh, Perry. When, when, when the Katy Perry hurricane ran through Oxford, <laughs> hey, there was debris everywhere. <laughs> Bo Wallace, three second-half touchdowns, a 10-yard go-ahead score to Jalen Walton. Old Miss takes the lead, under three to play. Blake Sims gets picked. Ten game losing streak, and I mean the square that night, it, it got weird out there in Oxford. It was fire, fun. I bet. Yeah. Hugh Freeze, number 15, Ole Miss, facing Saban. They were number two. Remember this? Chad Kelly bobbling the snap, that oh. wild pass, deflected. Quincy Adebojo takes it into the house for the touchdown. That was such a crazy play. I remember that. But then there's another one right there, Laquan Treadwell with a 24-yard score. Yeah, Hugh, Hugh oh, Freeze had there. Saban's number for a while. Yeah. 2016, number one Alabama on the ropes again at 19 Ole Miss. Chad Kelly, sack, Deron Payne, touchdown, ties the game at 24. Fourth quarter, Bama up, Kelly hit again. Jonathan Allen, for my money, this was probably Nick Saban's best defense. Yeah. They would win 48-33, tied to get the win. Lane Kiffin, the old coordinator at the time. Oh, in yeah. Tuscaloosa. Oh, speaking of Lane Kiffin, how about this one? Now the head coach at Ole Miss, facing Bama. This last year, it was a yard fest. That's Jerry and Ely taking the handoff, scoring from eight, nine yards out. Kiffin pumped, but score tied at 42. Najee Harris, now the Steelers with a 16-yard touchdown. 206 yards for him, 1,370 total yards of offense. Alabama winners there. Nick Saban has proven he's a winner, but that is especially the case when he faces his former assistant coaches. Saban is 23-0 all-time against former assistants in his career. His teams have won 21 of those games by at least 14 points. That includes this year's, last year's 63-48 thriller you just saw there against Lane Kiffin, who coached Ole Miss, Matt. Yeah, Ryan, like Jedi mind tricks against his former assistants, and they're scattered throughout the NFL and college football. Roddy Jones, my partner on Thursday nights, with me each and every Thursday to break down the weekend in college football. A little bit of a Matt stat I'm going to throw at you that most people aren't talking about. They're, they're coming off a bye week. Yeah. So they feel good about their situation. Head to Tuscaloosa. Give me a key to this game. All right. So I, I think the key is going to be this Ole Miss rushing attack. Ole Miss is a team that led the SEC in rushing a year ago. Florida, a lot of success against this Alabama defense running the football last week. They've got a three-headed monster, Jerry and Ely, uh, Henry Parrish, and then you look at Snoop Connor in the backfield. And by the way, Matt Corral can run the ball too. That's he's right. not gonna be he's not gonna be what Emory Jones was a week ago. But their ability to run the football, I think, is gonna be huge in this football game and then push the ball down the field. The key though might come down to Alabama's ability to run the ball. Mm -hmm. Against an Ole Miss defense, control the clock, shorten the game. Can you really see if this Ole Miss defense is significantly improved from a week ago and not let Matt Corral be on the field of Cook? And kind of a sidebar in this game, it's a Heisman Trophy battle between Corral and Bryce Young, both enlisted as the favorites. We always try to hand out September Heismans. Those two quarterbacks would get it, but this could be a big one in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Can't wait for that. College game day headed to Athens, Georgia, and Arkansas. Georgia doesn't wow you offensively, Roddy. What they do is they hit you hard defensively. What makes the Bulldogs' defense so good? Well, well I, I, you heard it earlier this year. Their big guys are fast, and their fast guys are big. And that's exactly <laughs> what you see from this Georgia team on defense. They are a team that absolutely smothers you defensively. They're not always perfect. But when they aren't, they have guys like Lewis Seen coming from the secondary, closing down anything. And what should be a 10- to 15-yard gain becomes a 2-yard gain, and you're playing second and eight. They really get after you up front. The linebackers are extremely talented. And then that secondary, they are as sharp and as well coached as any defense in the country. And by the way, 
this defense is fresh. I mean, they played Vanderbilt last week. They only played a handful of snaps uh, over the course of that game, so they are fresh and ready to go. Arkansas, on the other hand, coming off a really right. physical battle against Texas A&M. They have 300 pounders, Georgia does, that run like running backs. Yeah, yeah, which faster than you and I, certainly. It's frightening. When you were running back in college, you would know. I just do this. <laughs> All right, uh, we're on the call tonight as we are each and every Thursday. We've got a big one, 730 Eastern, right here on ESPN. We'll be on the call for Virginia against Miami. Miami has yet to play a conference game, 2-2 two and two on the season. Virginia also 2-2 two and two on the season. They've lost two conference games. We are watching the quarterback situation for Miami closely, whether or not we will see Derek King. That one storyline, what's the other? Well, I think the big thing is, is Brendan Armstrong, the quarterback for Virginia. That's going to be the thing that, that I think we introduce people to over the course of this game. Can this Miami defense that has struggled tackling in the open field, that has struggled just being consistent since that Alabama game, who kind of broke their will, can they come out and play well against a Virginia offense that leads the country? Brendan Armstrong leads the country in passing over the course of this game. So will they be able to, on defense, contain what Virginia is able to do and then on the opposite side yeah can Miami have the type of impact to prove to Virginia defensively that they are not a good defense they give up 600 yards against North Carolina they give up 500 yards against Wake Forest so if Miami is able to go out offensively and have some success early it kind of can get in the minds of this Virginia defense that hey maybe we aren't as good as we thought they were Jalen Knighton comes back from Miami Tyler Van Dyke is maybe the quarterback if Derek King's not able to go so on offense, can Virginia be able to, excuse me, can Miami mm-hmm. be able to have some success early against Virginia? Let me give you something interesting with Miami because I had mentioned a second ago, they're 2-2 two and two on the season. Alabama broke their will. They snuck by Appalachian State. They lost to Michigan State in the last week's Central Connecticut 69-0. They could still represent the Coastal Absolutely. in the ACC Championship. Wide game. open. That's why tonight is so big. We'll be on the call 7.30 Eastern ESPN. You get to go to the hotel and take a nap. I will continue doing Sports Center.